Hi. In this video, we'll be discussing local variables and scope. You may notice the voice in this video is different. That's because this video is a guest lecture. My name is Calvin, and I will be taking you through local variables and scope. So, when you declare a variable inside a method, you are making a local variable. What is a local variable? A local variable is a variable that only exists inside of a certain method. That variable is local to that method and does not exist in any other method. For example, in this class, we see that there are two methods with a variable called result. Even though these variables have the same name, they are not related at all. They exist inside different functions, so they have different scope. What do I mean by scope? Well, introducing scope. Scope refers to where a variable exists. Every variable exists inside of a certain scope, and this is known as the variable scope. So, in this class, where does local variable exist? What is the scope of local variable? In each of these three boxes, could I write a line of code that involves local variable? Well, outside of the method add one, I couldn't write a line that involves local variable. Local variable only exists inside the method add one because it is a local variable of that method. That's where it was defined. In general, a variable exists from the point where it's declared until the end of the block that it's declared inside of. And block refers to code enclosed in curly braces. So for example, in this class, we see that we have the instance variable instance var defined on the first line. So instance var exists from that point until the end of the class. It exists in every method. It exists all throughout the class because that is the block in which it's defined. Now we see this parameter x. Well, the parameter is defined there, so it exists throughout the entire method add, but it does not exist outside of add. Then we have local var. Local var exists from that line onward inside of the method add. It does not exist outside of add because that is the block that it's defined in. Now what about the for loop? We see that we have int i defined inside the for loop statement. Well, it turns out variables defined in a for loop only exist inside that for loop. So i only exists inside that for loop. These colors represent the scope of each of these variables. Now what's interesting is sometimes we might have naming conflicts inside of our code. If we have two variables that have the exact same name, but they do exist inside of the same scope, then the variable with the more specific scope takes precedence. The variable with the more general scope no longer exists in that location. This is called shadowing. Let's see an example of this. Here we have an instance variable named word to print. Now word to print should exist throughout the entire class and inside every single method. But we see in this method, print local var, we have a new string word to print defined as a local variable of this method. So when we go to print out word to print, which word will be printed? Well, it turns out here, since the local variable has a more specific scope, it will shadow the instance variable word to print. So the instance variable no longer exists inside of that method. And when we print out word to print, it will print out more specific scope because it shadows the instance variable. What about with the parameter? Here again, we have word to print defined twice. So both of these variables, word to print, share a scope. Which one will take precedence? Well, since the parameter is more specific, it will take precedence over the instance variable, and the instance variable will be shadowed. So if we had a function call print parameter high, it would print out high instead of more general scope. The parameter shadows the instance variable. Here, there is no naming conflict. We see that the only word to print present is the instance variable word to print. So when we run this, if we call print instance var, it will print out the value of the instance variable more general scope. Let's see this in the editor. So in this example, we can see that the scope of instance variables is throughout the entire class. It's not local to any specific method. So here we have two instance variables. One is a string that says, hello, I'm an instance variable. And the other is a counter that will keep track of how many times that is printed. We see that instance variable exists throughout the entire class. We can print it inside of run, we can print it inside of method one, and we can print it inside of method two. Also notice that changes made to instance variables are reflected throughout the entire class. So if we increment counter here, it will go from zero to one. We increment it again in method one, it will go from one to two. Then when we call method two, we increment it again, it'll go to three. Let's try this. Here we go. Instance variable exists in run. We get a counter of one. 
instance variable exists in method one, we get a counter of two, and instance variable exists in method two, we get a counter of three. Now in this example, we can see that local variables only exist from the point when they're declared until the end of their scope. For example, let's look at parameter scope. Here, parameter exists throughout the entire method. On the very first line, I can print out parameter. Inside method one, the local variable local does not exist until this line when it is declared. If I try to do something with local on this line, it will not exist and we'll get an error because local is not defined. Similarly, for method two, local only exists from the point that it's declared until the end of the method. So let's try printing out there and see what happens. And it turns out with for loops, for example, the loop counter i only exists inside of the loop. If we try to print out i here, it will not let us. So if we run this, ooh, we see that all of these variables are out of scope. So i is not in scope here, local is not in scope here, and local is not in scope here. So let's get rid of these lines. And there we go. We see that now our program runs. If we call parameter scope with hello world, we actually get hello world printed out twice, right there. And then when we call method one and method two, we see that method one's local variable gets printed, method two's local variable gets printed, and then inside the for loop scope, i gets printed three times. Now let's take a look at naming conflicts. So in this example, we have several variables all called name. Let's see which ones take precedence in which situation. So we're calling three methods, print instance var, print local var, and print parameter with the parameter parameter. So when we print instance var, we are going to print out name. We haven't declared any local variables inside of this method. So think about which string will get printed out here. Now in this method, we have local var. We have the string name equals to local var, and then we're printing out name. So will this name print out the local variable or the instance variable? Here, in the method print parameter, we are also printing out name. So will this print out the parameter name or will it print out the instance variable name? Let's see. Okay, so we see in this first one, the instance variable is printed out because there's no naming conflicts here. Name is the only variable in existence called name in this scope. Here, the local variable name ends up taking precedence over the instance variable. This is a more specific scope, so the local variable shadows the instance variable. And lastly, when we print parameter, the parameter takes precedence over the instance variable because the parameter has a more specific scope. So here, the parameter name is shadowing the instance variable name. 